Yes. Let's give this ministry and this convocation a great hand clap. Let's just take time and thank God. Hallelujah. Once again, before we begin the testimonial service of Convocation 2000, we like to honor the Lord and let's give our great founder, Apostle Murray, a great hand clap. Matter of fact, let's give him a standing ovation along with his lovely wife, Evangelist Shirley Murray, Dr. Murray and Dr. Murray. Let's give them a standing ovation. Let's tell the Lord once again, Lord, we thank you for our founders. Thank you for the founders, Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now let's give the bishops a hand clap in their wives. Let's give all the clergy pastors, dancing ministers, and pastors a hand clap. Everybody shout thank God for the men of God and women of God. Now clap those hands again for Jesus. We'll bless his name. Amen. Tonight I do give glory and honor to God. Amen. To Apostle and Sister Murray. To Apostle Wallace and Pastor Woods, Pastor Ferguson, the bishops, Bishop Keel, Bishop Cannon, to all these fine pastors and their wives up here tonight, amen. I thank and I praise God tonight, amen, for being saved, sanctified, and filled up with God's precious Holy Ghost. I thank and I praise the Lord tonight, amen, because I haven't always had that testimony, amen. I didn't even know anything about being saved or being filled with the Holy Ghost. I knew about... Uh, doing things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But, amen, I didn't know that you could get that power of God in your life, amen, with the Holy Ghost and help you to do right in the things that, and go in the right ways that you needed to go, amen. But I found myself a few years back, amen, bound by a drug called crack cocaine, amen. Found myself in a situation, amen, that I prayed to... Uh, uh, promised myself that I never uh, get caught up in, but I got caught up in that situation anyway, amen. I had a party in lifestyle, amen, and I wasn't a big uh, drug user. I didn't even use much marijuana, amen, but I tried this drug called crack cocaine one time, amen, and that was, that was it. I got hooked that time, amen. I remember, I can remember each time I think back and reflect back upon that, amen, I think about the song they sang where they say, turn out the lights, the party's over, amen. praise God, but at, at the party was over, but I just couldn't turn out the lights, amen. It just kept going on and on and on and on, amen. I tried to put this drug down, but I couldn't, amen. It began to, to destroy my life. And not only did it begin to destroy my life, amen, but people around me began to suffer. I wasn't bound by myself, amen. I might have been the only one smoking that dope, but it was more people bound with me than myself, amen. And I realized that, and I could see the hurt and the pain on them, amen. And I tried hard and harder, amen, to get rid of this drug, but it just wouldn't happen, amen. And I thought, hey, praise God, that, that uh, if I joined, joined a church, that it would help me and I could get rid of this drug. I knew that God was my only help, amen, because I saw my friends going in and out of the, 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 the various penitentiaries around, amen, and coming back doing the same old thing. Man couldn't help them. I saw them going to the rehabs and coming back doing the same. I even heard stories of them when they was in the rehab, jumping out the windows and going and getting high and coming back. And I knew that that wasn't my help. I couldn't, that wasn't, I was serious about getting rid of this drug. I was serious about about turning my life around, amen, and I, I realized that that wasn't my help, amen. If it didn't help then, what made me think it was going to help me? My only help I knew was, was going to be God. And I began to pray and ask God to help me, and I joined, like I said, I joined the church, but I found out it's not in the church, it's in Jesus. It's not in just joining the church, you got to have Jesus in your life, you got to have power in your life, amen. I remember joining the church, and he, each time the preacher would holler, amen, I'd get in my car and I'd run across the bridge and I'd smoke my cigarettes and drink my beer and smoke my dough. And it began, and, and I began to get frustrated, amen, and, and disgusted with all this. And I remember that God just wouldn't leave me alone, amen. And, and uh, I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I just couldn't let this drug alone. And I can remember one evening that we were sitting around getting high, and God was dealing with me that evening. And as we were getting high, I just couldn't do it anymore. I, I just, 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 just couldn't do it. And God was dealing with me that day, and, and I, I, I told God, I said, God, you know I'm walking away from this stuff today. I said, God, you gave me this life, and you, I made a mess of it. God, I'm going to give it right back to you. And I thank and I praise God, amen, because God heard, if he didn't hear any other prayers, he heard that one right there, amen. Because when I put that drug down and walked away, I had about, oh, maybe two or three miles to walk. And I walked home, and as I got home, I sat up under the tree, amen, still talking to God about what I, I had planned to do. And I asked, I told God that you, when I found a, a church that I was going to go to this church, but I wanted God to lead me to where he wanted me to be. 
because I knew that it would deliverance wasn't in every church and God had a place of deliverance for me I knew this and God God didn't didn't, didn't uh, let me down amen he showed me a light as I sat under that tree that very day he showed me a light I saw some people from this church getting in their car getting ready to go to church and it, it just touched upon my heart to go over there and tell them said when, when are you going back to that church I want to go with you and the man said this was on a Thursday night he said we're going back Saturday night and praise God that Saturday night, I was sitting and standing in the driveway and waiting on him to go to church. And I went to church with him that night, amen, and went over to Full Gospel Holy Temple, amen. Like I said, I didn't know anything about being saved. I didn't know anything about being filled with the Holy Ghost, amen. But God took me to this church so I could be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and be taught up under this ministry how to live the life and how to use that power that God had given me to, to keep off the drugs, amen, and to stop a, uh, the, the, the life that I was living. And I thank and I praise God tonight, amen, because when I got over to that church, amen, that God saved me and set me free from those drugs, amen, and he filled me up with his precious Holy Ghost, amen, because that was the power that I needed to stay off of those drugs, amen. And that's been over 10 years ago, and God is still keeping me. And I ask that all righteous ones pray for me as I continue in God. To God, who is the head of our life, um, to our father, Pastor Ferguson, and to our mother, to all of the pastors and first ladies, to Apostle Murray and Sister Murray, we thank God for being here on tonight. And the selection that we are going to sing for you is Mary Did You Know. Pray for us. Did you? 
takes us way back. It's the one that Sister Murray loves to hear. Come on, put your hands together. How many man going a little bit further back?
Everybody's quiet and in a somber mood. I remember when I was a little boy, I used to hear these praises, and they didn't always have music. But when you think about the old camp meetings, you could hear those songs, Precious Memories. trying to change the way it used to be sacred those old memories are sacred This is the best time to be alive. The devil don't like it, but the church is here. Look at somebody and tell them the devil don't like it, but the church is here. And I want to tell you now, you might as well get it in your skull. You can't do nothing with the church. Can I get a hallelujah? You might as well get ready to get with it because the church are here to stay. Now tell your neighbor, she will not be moved. And so I asked God, what am I going to preach? And I don't know how much we're going to holler tonight. And I don't know how much we're going to turn corners. We may not turn any tonight. But I'll guarantee you by the time you leave this place, you would have known you've been to church. Touch your neighbor and say, we might as well have church. See, the Bible says God is that spirit. Now, we might as well get this together that everybody that worship God, go worship God in spirit. Let me share with you. Stop your complaining now. Touch your neighbor and say, quit complaining. It makes me sick to hear people talking about, well, you know, preacher, I've been going through. If you ain't going through, then you backslid. 
Everybody who says sanctify and love the Lord is going through something. That's why you still say. Everybody who ain't going through nothing that went back from Wednesday came. And I told you last night, I've been there. I've done that. I ain't going back. Now look at your name and say, get it together. And stop complaining. And then we got to understand something. The Bible says, many are the affliction of the righteous. So I want to know what is your problem? I'm going through something. Well, the Bible tell you that. Listen, I want to point something out to you and read it if you please. I think they turned me down a little too low. I can't go nowhere with that. And if you read through the Bible, you'll understand something. And God point this out to me. Jesus has, has never claimed all power is given unto me until he went to hell and back. When he came out of hell, he says, all power. Oh, I feel God coming in here. Is given on to me. What you saying, brother preacher? Somebody said, but preacher, I'm going through hell. You better go on and go through there because there is a fresh anointing awaiting you, and you got to go to hell to get it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, order in the house. Order in the house. I want to point something out to you, and we're going to the book of Psalms. And I'm going to preach tonight briefly from the subject, let the party begin. Look at your neighbor and shake hand with two questions and tell let the party begin. Whether you're ready for it or not, let the party begin. But before this, before we can celebrate, God has called the house to order when I look at the apostle and that's why I wanted to come early this year to hear him Lobius Murray I see several things I see a man that have weathered the storm one then I see a pioneer somebody that get things started and that qualifies him as an apostle an apostle is a forerunner an apostle is one that goes in territories that are invaded by demons and break the bonds of hell and command Satan to let God's people free. Now you're going to be blessed only when you follow the order of God. Touch your neighbor and say, you got to follow the order. You got people who want to be blessed. Tell you, I don't know how much we're going to holler. But they won't break the order. Look at your neighbor and say, uh oh. You can't break the order of God and be blessed. Notice this now. I got to take my time. Notice this. The Bible says, if you be willing, everybody holler, willing. Willing. Apostle Murray stand up and say, we're going to build the church. Everybody that is willing say, yes. Yes. I didn't mean you must say yes. I meant you said yes already. <laughs> See everybody, everyone holler, yes, we gonna help you. That's willing. Now the next word is obedient. See the Bible is saying you're gonna be blessed if you be willing. He said you're gonna be blessed if you be willing and obedient. Mean you got to do as you're told whether you understand it or not. I would have gave, but I need a better understanding. You ain't got none. The order of God is to be willing. Uh oh. Touch your neighbor I feel like Apostle Wallace talking to you. You got to be willing and obedient. See, don't measure your blessing by cars, house. Hello and material gain. You got to measure your 
your spiritual maturity by how well you're keeping the order of God. What is God order? Follow me. Understand you ain't the head. Can I work this a little bit? Touch your neighbor and tell him you make him preach. But you ain't ahead. I tell him in my church all the time. I don't care how you scream and holler. At the end of the day, I am the apostle. God got one chief, everybody else is Indians. And so you've got to understand there is a divine, and everybody holler divine, divine. Order. order. Now, you may be a good preacher. You ain't the head. You may can sing well. Tony can conduct the, the choir, but he ain't the head. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, follow him, you'll know where he's going. Bible says the anointing see the divine order of God is first apostle I don't care whether the devil like it or not and God anoints the head first <laughs> look at your neighbor just smile and get him upset say how dare you thought God was going to anoint you first God anoints the head and the anointing comes from the head to the beard now who is the beard the apostle Murray is the head the bishops is the are, are, are the beard you members are just the skirts the anointing come from the head to the bed and down to the skirt Psalms 1 33 behold 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 be how good how good and how pleasant uh-huh it is for brethren uh-huh to dwell together now notice this is good it is pleasant it is right for brethren to dwell together in unity in unity now how do you know that a church is in unity when the weakest one looks strong what does that mean it means that there's such a unity in the body of christ that you cannot tell when there is a weak church in the organism apostle murray said something the other night and i listened and we talk about well you know brother preacher i'm from a small town and i can't do this god is sick and fed up and tired of our complaint he said i want brethren to dwell together in unity and when we get together in unity god will supply us with strength there will only be unity when the divine order of god is kept when you get out of order there is chaos and confusion Every preacher that does not follow the divine order is out of order. And everything is out of order going to wind up in chaos. You wonder why these churches have to change. And I got the answer. They're out of order. And so they got to turn to gimmicks, trickery, bribery, and they got to lower their standards. They're out of order. Right. Look at your neighbor and say, get in order, get in order, get in order. Come on, hunt your neighbor with your shoulders and with your shoulders and say, get in order. We're going to get to my text. Read. Verse 2. Uh-huh. It is like the precious ointment. It is like the precious ointment. Upon the head. Notice where it hits. Notice where the anointing hits. Not the skirt. Uh-oh. Not the beard. Apostle Wallace, I've been to college. I got my DD degree in duck and duty. I got my DLD, dumb lying devil. P 
PhD poor hungry dog you need to get in order and the order of God is the anointing hits the hand the hand directs the body oh lord I feel I'm talking to somebody the head govern the body so when the head say I'm going downtown the body goes we're living in a time when the head say going one way the foot say not me so the apostle said we gonna do this and then somebody else said well I can't get with it right now you out of order if you sit down and rediscuss it in a negative way you out of order that's why you ain't got no anointing if I'm sound like I mean you the honest truth is I do mean you the anointing touch your head everybody hits the head not yours anything that's going to happen for full gospel holy temple God going to reveal it to the apostle Murray first here's the visionaire every one of us got to fall in line to this divine order in order to be anointed touch your neighbor and tell him if you want to be anointed you're going to follow this order now, give me a few minutes, then we're going to see if we can turn some corners. We get in trouble when we lean on our own ability. This is my little work. Me, my mama, my mama dog, and my one cat. And we're going to work this until the Lord move for us. And what foolish we get in service and a couple of people start falling out. Folks start dancing and we say, oh, we had a move of God. If you were out of order, you ain't had a move from the time you get started. God don't move where there is disorder. Because you dance and shout and speak in tongue. Honda Basunda, Texaco, Shell Honda. That don't mean you in order, honey. Can I get me a witness here? Anytime you in order, you're going you're gonna to experience the divine favor of God. You're going to see healing and miracles in your church. But it coming through God's divine order. Some of us trying to rush the anointing. Touch your neighbor and say reverse, reverse. and get in, order. get in order. The anointing hits the head of Aaron uh -huh. that ran down upon the beard. Now notice where it go next. For us contrary preachers. The anointing hits the head. Can I talk? Yeah. Mean the vision comes to the apostle. He pass it down to the ministers, which is the beard. He ain't say nothing but the mustache. And so when he pass it down to the ministers, which is the beard, it is their responsibility to hand it down to the skirt, which is the members of the church. Somebody to clap your hands and give God the praise. Now you can't decide to let the devil use you. He said, well, if we take everything we've got and support the vision, what's going to happen to us? You ain't got none. You, oh, oh, you don't, God doesn't have separate and individual visions in the same organization everybody's seeing something different you cross eye touch your neighbor and tell him if you ain't seen what the apostles see you cross eye come on come on y'all go help me touch your neighbor say if you ain't seeing what the apostles see you cross eye your problem is you need another touch you can't see a vision different from what God showed the man of God. I don't care if you're in the next county. If you're in this, you see what the apostles.
muscles see. And you seize it because he shows it to you. You the beard. Now touch your neighbor and touch you the skirt. And this anointing comes down. I hear Bishop Cannon say something that the Lord had me dealing with over the past weeks. This apostolic anointing. Which has nothing to do with Jesus only. But God has called the church now in an apostolic movement where our teaching is built on the apostles doctrine. Somebody ain't going to say nothing here. The apostle doctrine is these signs. Oh, I feel my hip here. It's going to follow them. The believers ain't supposed to follow the sign. Everywhere you see a believer, the sign supposed to follow them. Why we don't see the signs? You're out of order. Put your arm around somebody and hug them and say, you my friend. But I think Apostle Wallace, me and you. <laughs> Read that. That ran upon the beard. That ran upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard. Notice this now. Even Aaron's beard. When the purpose, you come to this convocation. And this man of God shares with us the vision that God gave him. The duty of the beard is to return to the skates with what God gave us at this convocation. There should be no mumbling, grumbling, fumbling, and tumbling because we see the vision. And if you ain't seen a vision, everybody you talk to, you need to persuade them of this vision. All right, let's hurry, read. That went down uh -huh. to the skirts. To the skirts. Of his garments. All right, go to Isaiah 55 and 4. God said, I want the church to get ready. I sit here and the anointing of God is so strong in this place. I said, God. What, what is this? Does the people really understand what God is getting ready to do? God is doing something in full gospel that passes the understanding of the natural man. You got to be in the spirit. You got to be anointed to see what God is doing in this organism, in this church. You got to be in the spirit to see what this church is coming to. It's party time, y'all. Look at the name and holler. It's party time. But you can't see it in the flesh. Isaiah 55 and 4 read. Behold. Behold. I have given him. Notice this. God has not just set Apostle Murray. A leader up as a common man. Apostles are not ordinary people. Did I mess up your mind? We'll clean it up. They are extraordinary because they have been endowed with an anointing to destroy principalities and powers if you don't believe it i don't care how dry up your church is you i dare you let the apostle come through and that anointing will stir up stuff it's because the apostles anointing is a special anointing to break barriers that the devil has invaded Isaiah 55 and 4 read Behold, Behold I have given him I have given him For a witness to the people For a witness Who is this man? God representative He represent God And God said I've given him for a witness uh -huh. To the people To you Read A leader A leader Everybody holler leader, leader. What does a leader do? What a leader does, you don't lead the leader. The leader leads you. You want to be blessed? Follow the leader. Now you got a lot of pew leaders. In the Bahamas we call them bench leaders. Amen. That sit down in the pew and try to lead somebody. The preacher preached something and they say, well, that don't go for me. Because the Lord speaks to me. Well, you better go back in the room. Because what you heard was not God. You ate too much. 
So you gotta understand them collie greens that are cabbage and Ham Hawkins start talking to you after a while. You got to go back in because you need to hear God. God said he give you a leader. How come you lay down and got up with something else? How come you went to bed and lay down to my the Lord dealt with me all night last night? He was telling you, get right, you're going to hell. I have given him as a leader and a commander. Uh-huh. To the people. To the people. To lead who? You. Touch your neighbor and say, God give him to lead you. Leviticus, let's skip that and go down to Leviticus. We're hurrying because we want to see how we can tie this together. Huh? And so God said to me, people must understand I move by divine order. Now the way we get messed up is we, we are carried away by some of this new stuff we see. You know this out of order church? These confused people? These frustrated people, they got so much of problem and stress that they go to church and wake it out? And the church was made for us to follow divine order so God can bless us, so we can walk in prosperity. Nothing wrong with prosperity, but the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Can I get a witness here? It is the desires of God that you prosper, but you need to get delivered and set free first. That's the divine order. And that's why I'm blessed coming to Dallas. Because I can't deal with this crazy religion. Leviticus 26, 23 read. And if you will not be reformed by me. Notice this now. If you will not be reformed by me. By these things. By the leader. If you ain't going to be reformed by the leader. But it's going to live your own life. Do as you please. Nobody going to tell me how to live. This is my life. Uh -huh. I live it the way I please. The devil is a knock me liar. Hey. And the truth ain't in him. High five your neighbor and tell him the devil is your lie. When you come in God church, you coming in order. You're going to either be in order or you're going to find out that you ain't in the church. God ain't going to have nobody in the church out of order doing as they please. Living any old kind of nasty life? Got the devil in them? And speaking in tongues? Shaking like a leaf in hurricane? The church became a show now. Go to church and tell what kind of car you drive. God, I wish I was preaching in the Bahamas. I would have tell you what to do with your car. Somebody ain't going to say nothing here. God is looking for somebody that's going to get filled of the Holy Ghost. So what? If you drive a Mercedes. That has nothing to do with it. Amen. I drive the BMW from Monday to Friday and drive a Mercedes on Sunday. Somebody asked me why, I said, I feel like it. <laughs> and they had a write-up in the papers about me the other day. And then the papers read, they got a gossip column and it read, Nation's Chief of Apostle drives a $75,000 BMW. And so, I call him. I said, y'all got the information mixed up. I drive that from Monday to Friday. And I drive a, 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 almost $100,000 Mercedes on Sunday. Print it right if you're going to talk it. Now what you're saying, Apostle, this I want to show you that your material gain has nothing to do with your spiritual standing with God. You can drive a Mercedes and still go to hell. You can drive a BMW and still go to hell. So what if you, oh God, I feel like preaching? You standing up here bragging about your uh -huh. material gain? Yes, yes, preach. Your car, your clothes, your house. I live in a 
40 something room house, eight bedrooms, sit on more than four acres of land. But it has nothing to do with my spiritual standing with God. God, I feel like preaching. Your money has nothing to do with the blessings of God. And I tell folks every day, don't measure your spiritual life because of what you got financially. Clap your hands and give God the praise. If you're out of order, you ain't blessed. I, Bishop Key, cannot understand. Bishop Cannon, and y'all help me. How church people could claim Pastor Woods. They got the Holy Ghost. Love the ministry. But invest their money. Hello now. Into things that they don't need. When God give his visionaire a vision. Every person in full gospel holy temple should a hold up on these temporal things they're trying to get until the man of God has already completed the vision that God gave him to complete y'all ain't gonna like that but I didn't come here on a borrow ticket I got a wrong trip ticket Credit cards, money in my pocket, and I'm more than a million miles from being broke. I'm only financially embarrassed. What I'm trying to tell you, honey, you've got to understand how this anointing is going to flow. This may not be what you want. We may holler tomorrow night, but I'm going to get this thing in you. You want God? Hear this now. Hear this. Hear this. Don't try this one. I preached this in the Bahamas. I said, look, if you believe that I am the man of God you claim you believe, and you got $50,000 in the bank, go to the bank. Do your head like this. Tell your neighbor he's coming at you. <laughs> Withdraw at least 10% out of that 50000 Give it to the man of God. And say the anointing is coming from the head. Oh, you're missing this. <laughs> Everybody else is doing it. Them folk were going to church and ain't getting no blessing. Simply going to church, sitting down there to act like they crying. I don't know something wrong with black folk. Y'all got to forgive me. Can I get a witness here? We'll, we'll, we'll cry in a minute and ain't nothing to us. We satisfied with a trill in our flesh. And they see the church cry, but I feel the power moving on me. Anytime the power of God move on you, it comes to bring a change. Can I get a witness here? You've got to follow the other. Let, let's read this, then I'm going to bring this in. Read it quickly. But we'll walk contrary unto me. But we'll walk contrary. If you put anything before the vision, you're contrary. That's why you ain't blessed. Have you noticed? You spend your money for a suit. You put it on and next Sunday it can't fit you. You put it on and it fits you good this week. Next Sunday you look like duck in plastic. You spend your money to buy some stockings. And you get to the hotel and you can't find your stockings. When you find it and put it on your big toe comes straight through. You spend your money for clothes and when you put it on it just don't fit you. Somebody ain't going to say nothing here. God said you should have invested that into my kingdom. The Lord said son tell him I'm getting ready for a celebration. It's party time. Everybody throw your two hands up and all it's party time. But the only people going to be partying is those that follow God divine order. Everybody holler order. These bunch of out of order saints. 
Live in us there, please. Read the rest of that for me. Then will I also walk contrary unto you. God says, look, I'm going to walk contrary unto you. Why? You didn't follow my divine order. You put your business before mine. That's why some of you wind up driving a pushmobile. You got to push it to start, push it to stop. Who ain't got a pushmobile, got a hopemobile, hope it make it. And God said, if you follow my divine order, I will bless you. Let's go to Isaiah. And we're going to get ready. 46 and 10. We're going to get ready and see if we can close this for tonight. Divine order. People's minds are messed up. Church folks ain't living nothing. Ain't nothing now to come to church and jump and shout and leave the church and go and shock up. Sleeping with somebody they ain't never married. And talk about me and him been together long enough. He's my common law husband. Common law the devil. If you ain't married, you shacking up. And you need to understand you ain't going to heaven. And that ain't your sweetheart. That's your sour heart. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. He's driving you to hell. Some of you young ladies ought to be ashamed. Letting these fellas fool you because they got some Jerry Kyle in their head. And got these slick hair. And you running crazy after these slick looking head folk. Wave your hands and holler glory. glory. I'm not going to meddle you. We're going to turn this cone in a minute. God says you got to follow divine order. That's why this church is out of order. Everybody now, I tell them in my church, I mean y'all, I'm talking to them in the Bahamas. 16, 17, say they got boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm in love. At 17, you know anything about love? That's the devil fooling you. And because we want to live the life we please. I know what I feel. Uh -huh. One sister told me, Bishop, I know I love him. I say, you can't. You don't know him. How you going to love somebody you just meet? They're confused. What am I used to tell me, Bishop, I got a problem. I said, what's your problem? She said, I'm in love. I said, what's the problem with that? She said, with two people, which one do I choose? I said, none. She said, why? I said, because you don't love none of them. You can't love two persons. But this how this church is confused. They want to live like the devil in hell and come sing in the choir. You can't tell them about it. Tell them about it, they get upset. They get upset, they won't leave. I'm going to find me a church where they have love and where they sympathetic. You can't be no sympathetic than this. Get right, get saved, or you're going to hell. That's it. <laughs> Divine order. And you young ladies ought to have enough sense to stop being in church singing praise to the Lord and somebody walking off the street talking about, baby, I ain't sleep last night. And got you tripping. I tell you the other time, anybody talking about, but, but, but you got anybody talking about, they're, they're tripping. Or talking about, uh, I, I'm falling in love, I fall in love. You don't fall in love. If you fall in love, you tripping. And if you tripping, you falling down. And you want these fellas, I, mean, I fell in love with you. Uh, look at them and say, you tripping. You in church and they're trying to swing you, but I didn't sleep, you didn't, I didn't sleep last night. And you're getting all crazy about why you've been walking up and down through my mind. But baby, my feet hurt. And you believe that lie. That's the devil in them. You ought to go to sleep and go to bed and shut your eye and say your prayer so God can deliver you. But this new church offer us all kind of thing. But I come to Dallas to tell you tonight, it is out of order. We're not going to be blessed until we follow the divine order of God. Isaiah. 46 verse 10. Uh-huh. Declaring the end. Declare the end from the beginning see this that apostle anointing 
God gives the man an eyesight to see not today. And this is why so many people cannot understand the ministry of an apostle. It's not your ordinary pastoral ship ministry. And he said, well, the apostle is hard on us. That's the ministry of an apostle. I tell him in my church, when your pastor that is an evangelist stand up, he stand to evangelize you. When I come in the city, I'm the man that tell you about yourself. I tell him my church, I'm not the one that got you up jumping and, and speaking in tongues and hollering and falling out. I'm the one that tell you but yourself. Get right, get saved, get delivered. Let's go to heaven or you're going to die and go to hell. Ain't no kind of corner with that. Can somebody throw your hands up and holler glory? And so God said, I'm calling order to the body of Christ. When anybody that's going to be blessed is going to walk in divine order. Everybody don't stand up. Just pick your foot up and put it down. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, you got to walk in divine order order if you want to be blessed you got to walk in order there is a celebration coming there is a party coming there's a time when the body of Christ gonna come into the refreshing but not before she's get in order read and from uh -huh. ancient times from the ancient times the things uh -huh. that are not yet done read saying uh -huh. my counsel shall stand hear what God say my counsel shall stand what i give the head is going to stand can i get a witness here and so what god's calling is divine order read and i will do and i will do all my pleasure all my pleasure uh-huh calling a ravious bird calling a ravious bird from the east now that ravious bird represent give me a few minutes to explain that the prof that's a prophetic symbol of the apostolic anointing that ravious bird in the greek word represent a hawk a hawk is a bird can i get a witness here that scoops down upon and and, and and it is an aggressive bird and so what god is calling the church now to be aggressive god is calling the church to take back what the devil has stolen from her can i get me a witness here the church need to become spiritually violent and go to hell door and say satan you've got something that belonged to us can I get a witness here and I come to collect high five your neighbor and say I want it Acts 3 and let's close notice something and we're going to bring this in in order for us to celebrate we must have an occasion I understand tonight that you may not shout much with this but God said I want this to get into the hearts of people because the church has become out of order everybody got their own little thing going half retarded half crazy ain't got much sense in a corner and we got our own thing going this is what the Lord gave me. I got to work with this. This is what the Lord gave me. We ain't got no insight. We can't see beyond our big toe. Some of us don't know where our big toe is. Huh? So in order for us to celebrate, there must be a reason. And before the celebration comes, God says, I want to bring restoration. To restore means to bring back. Recall. Reestablish. Hello, some revive. And so God says, before this divine order must come. And then I'm going to bring back some things to the church that has been taken from her. What has happened? Please listen to me. I've got to get this in your spirit. What has happened? We can sit up here tonight and talk about this new church. As much as we want this new church is a flam that makes the people flesh feel good people are not gonna come where we are because we tell them about their self 
And so what we do, we draw back because we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Everywhere Jesus went, two things happened. He leave them shouting, glad, or cussing mad. I tell at my church when I come to your town, I leave you shouting, glad, or you're going to cuss me out. Anyone you do is all right with me. Because the job of the gospel is not to make peace with everybody. It's not to make everybody comfortable. I don't know who tell people they're supposed to come to church and nobody's supposed to upset them. I like to go to church where the preacher don't get on my nerve. I'm the man who was sent to get on your nerve. I tell them my church I was called to work on your nerve. And they say I like to go to church where you can. And this is not America. Now this is Bahamas. They get real upset with me. Like them, I ain't scared of nobody. That's it. And you know they say I like to go to church where you can just feel the power of God. And let me tell you something America. If it have not changed it your life. It was not the power of God. Amen. Or somebody to give Jesus a round of applause. Amen. The gospel was made to change. I don't understand how you could be saved and desire the same thing. That you used to desire before you get saved. And the Bible says if any man be in Christ. I mean these Christians they change and talk. You see them in church and they hear you like, what's up? You jiving. You tripping man. This talk is the talk of the world. When Jesus come in, he changed your life. And they tell you, well, I used to that. Honey, then what happened with the change? So we caught up on the prosperity session of the gospel. Oh, we're going to close. But God says, I want to restore some order. I want the fear of God back in the house where people fear God, where you didn't come to church. Now, now, this is not America again. Forgive me, I got a couple more words that I'm through. Have you noticed you don't know where you are now when you go to church? I mean, you'll think you're in the movie theater. They're sitting up and they got their arm throw around one another and they're rubbing one another's shoulder. Get upset with me now. And Bishop, they think because they're married, they got the right to do it. I don't care how much you marry to her. You ain't got no business rubbing her shoulders in church. Some of these fellas can't never get in the spirit. They just stuck right up under this woman like, like deodorant under her arm. And they can't get in the Holy Ghost. I agree that's your wife honey but this thing is not of God you in the house of God and you come to praise the Lord you ain't come to be rubbing and feeling and, and talking about my honey somebody done fool this new generation I don't care who tell you that of God. When you come to church, you come to praise God. You ain't come to look see where your wife's sitting or whether she's still in here or not. If she got the Holy Ghost, no matter where she are, she got it. This ain't God. They can't get in the spirit, Bishop. They're rubbing, rubbing. Come on, this my, this my meat. I got the papers. If the papers all you got on your meat, you gonna be hungry. You need to know in these day and time, honey. You need more than the papers. Your meat needs some Holy Ghost. Because if your meat ain't got no Holy Ghost, you will be in the deep freeze and she'll be in somebody else frying pan. I ain't care what the devil tell you. You got to follow the divine order of God because there is a celebration coming.
coming. It's time to break loose. High five your neighbor and say, I feel a praise. And he all right. You need the Holy Ghost. When I come to church, I come to praise him. I ain't come to love much. I ain't come to show who wife is the prettiest. The church got a show off going on. No wonder we can't support the apostle vision. We're trying to run a race with somebody else. Can I pray for a couple more minutes? You know why we can't support the apostle vision? We're trying to run race. Buying stuff that you can't afford. <laughs> Can I get a witness? How loud? And he all right. So you got to know your place and you got to learn to wait on God. God is sick and tired of this church where people got this competitive spirit. Everybody now walking and mincing, trying to show off. You better sit your skin down and get full of the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and all night long they'll be talking and you ain't get no edification out of it and they tell me well you know pray the Lord the Lord bless my daughters with new cars and, and the Lord bless my little precious wife over there and see her over there she's got her a new car and you know the poor precious little thing don't tell people what the hell she catch home Somehow or another day, these women were trained, these, excuse me now, the women were trained to grin and pretend. They catch hell home with these um, 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 fellas. <laughs> and when they come to church, they got them like this. This ain't nothing else but a show. And God says what I want the people to do is to understand there's a time of refreshing that is coming from the Lord. And when this refreshing comes, people are going to come to church and experience the power of God. And the anointing of God is going to fall. And the apostle is not going to have to stand up and tell folk, I need you to support this vision. But people are going to get so full of the Holy Ghost, they're going to run to the man of God and say, Apostle, I want to give this. I've got to see the vision come to power. Can I get a witness? Turn to two person and testify and say it's party time. Well, it's party time. I'm through y'all. Can I get a witness? It's party time. Could you high five somebody? Say it's party time. Now tell them I got a reason to celebrate. I got a reason. To praise the Lord because I understand the divine order. Last scripture and I'm through. Acts. Acts 3 18. Verse 18. Uh-huh. But those things uh-huh. Which God before. But those things which God before have showed by uh -huh. the mouth of all his prophets Read. that Christ should suffer. That Christ should suffer. In other words, you got to understand as Christ suffer in the flesh, arm yourself likewise. Forget about complaining, but your suffering, you're going to go through them. Touch your neighbor and say, forget about complaining about it. You're going to go through them. I went through some things this year and God brought me out. When I was getting ready to go to Texarkana, Texas, I could not go. My eldest brother was struck uh, with cancer. It was a terrible time for me. My aunt died, one of my great supporters. It was a terrible time for me. But I refused to quit. I tell the devil, do as you please. For Christ I live, for Christ I die. Forget about your suffering, read he have so fulfilled read repent ye therefore notice that word repent ye therefore and be converted and be converted 
change, turn around, made new. You're going in the wrong direction, turn around. Reason you cannot be anointed, you're out of order. You get up and try to preach and you're as dry as soda biscuit, you're out of order. See, we are caught up on the hollering. And you don't understand half of what them folks say. And oh Lord, I saw June when it run down July. And August run down September. And you said, yeah. And October, look at November and you don't know what the preacher said. There is no change. Bunch of pulpit clowns. Jivers and connivers. God says, I want something that's going to change the life of people. People must understand the anointing is going to flow through the divine order. The church will not experience a move of God. Till she get an order. It comes from the head. Down to the beard. Then to the skirt. You can't get it members. It got to be passed down. To ya. I don't care how much you in your house shaking. Honda Civic, Honda Civic, Honda Civic, Honda Civic. And come on, tell me you got the Holy Ghost. And they ain't got power to live right. <laughs> they always get upset with me. Some of you sisters got Honda Pacific, Honda Pacific, they got power to listen to your husbands. You try to rule your husband. Get mad with me if you please. Let the woman be in subjection to her husband. Subjection mean under his authority. Under his rule. Under his govern. For the man is the head. Next subject. I ain't going to preach that now. The man is the head. Now notice what that means when he said the man is the head. He does the thinking for you. He does the speaking for you. He does the hearing for you. He does the smelling for you. He does the speaking for you. He is the head. <laughs> don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost and don't listen to your husband. He get me mad. I'll tell him a thing or two. The devil is a lie. You gonna understand divine order. Hey, I ain't gonna preach that over here. That makes I preach that in the Bahamas and I want television. The telephone keep ringing. <laughs> One lady called me, said, Pastor Wallace. I said, yes. I was listening to you for eight years, but I tell you something. You set my husband up to get killed. I said, what happened? She told me, he woke me up and tell me, get up. Apostle Wallace is straightening you out for me. I said, he's right. All right. You out of order if you ain't listening to him. He's saved and sanctified. You don't do as you please. You don't jump up and go to mama and your husband don't know where you at. You don't be gone all day and your husband don't know where you at. And you come to church talking about, I've been laying before the Lord. You better cut it short. God is a God of order. I tell you before, I don't care how much money you making, you and your money come under subjection. I tell Sister Wallace, I don't care if you make a million dollars, you and your one million dollars come under subjection when it reach my house. You rule it from the office where you work to my house. <laughs> when it reach my house it comes under subjection <laughs> 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 somebody at a 
holler glory. Listen. Order! I can hear some of you right now. My husband bet not try that. He bet not try that because he ain't the head. If you save and sanctify, you'll understand he is your protector. His job is to love you. Huh? Love don't mean, oh God. You've got to understand love. Sister Wallace and I have been married over 26 years. We get better with age. You grow in love. You don't fall in. You grow. And God says there is a divine order. And you women are trying to rule your husband. I'm telling you now, you out of order. I don't care how much tongues you speak in. And God said, I want to place it back. The way I want it to be. But it got to come through divine order. Read, repent. Now ye, let's get ready. Repent, read. Repent ye therefore. Repent ye therefore. And be converted. Be converted. That your sins uh -huh. may be blotted out. Uh -huh. When the times of refreshing when shall come. When the times of refreshing shall come. From the presence of the from Lord. From the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ. Notice this, the time of refreshing. Who's going to get it? Those that have repented. You want to be blessed? Have you repent? Is there a change in your life? You men that don't know who you want, what you want. Got your wife and looking at somebody else's. Hello. Sitting up in church and talking about I can't eat peas and rice all the time. Oh, I can't eat white rice all the time. I got to mix it. I'm sorry, brother, you stuck. God says those that repent is going to experience this refreshing, this reviving, full gospel. And I'm through, hold it, that's it, I'm done. Is on the list to receive from God this refreshing that is coming from the presence of God now I'm going to sound Bahamian and, and I don't know what I can preach this year but I'm going to preach it I tell folk in the Bahamas I say don't mess with me because if you mess with me I'll run in the presence of God because in the presence of God there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore you've got to know how to get in the presence of God in spite of your circumstances don't tell me Bishop my back is against the wall so God said this is a time of refreshing I want everyone to stand with